Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. Smart Blonde, it's a 1937 mystery comedy, the first in a slew of films concerning intrepid reporter Torchy Blaine, Glenda Farrell, of the Morning Herald. Give a like. Subscribe. Share. And most of all, stay positive. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1943 for a PRC production entitled A Night for Crime. It's wartime, 1943, and during a blackout, a movie studio publicity agent and his girlfriend hear a scream. They find Ellen Smith dead in the next apartment. She was murdered. Ellen Smith was an actress at the studio where publicity agent Joe Powell worked. Her murder seems related to the disappearance of the studio's biggest star, Mona Harrison. If they can find Mona Harrison, perhaps she can set, shed light on the murder of Ellen Smith. But this attempt just leads to more murder. Our female lead is Glenda Farrell. She was born in Oklahoma in 1904 and began acting on stage at age seven. In a 50-year career, she worked in over 100 movies and TV shows. She is best remembered for playing Torchy Blaine in the 1930s series of eight films. She died in 1971 at the age of 66. Our male lead is Lyle Talbot. He was born in Pennsylvania in 1902 and also worked in movies and TV for over 50 years. He began his career at the beginning of the talkie era. New actors had to have a pleasing voice, no regional accent, and the rather rare ability to memorize lines. Lyle Talbot could play a, a hero or a villain in dramas or comedies. Let's return to 1943. Enjoy A Night for Crime. letting me out of here, Pop. Okay, Mr. Powell, but I wouldn't try driving through the blackout. Oh, don't worry. I'll be where I will have the street lights are out. Good night, Pop. Good night. Who is it? I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. Oh, Lady Macbeth, I do believe. Do you do all your calling in blackouts? <laughs> How do you like it? I raised it all by myself. Mm. It's the biggest publicity stunt since Munich. 
Couldn't you arrange with the army to have those searchlights fill out motion picture associates? Oh, sure, in Technicolor. Well, come on in. Be careful not to break your neck. Or do it, send it here. Did you come from your office or from a bar room? It serves you right, Susan, for being so glamorous, so gorgeous. Every time I look at you, things just go black. Yes, I know, with little pink elephants in the background. Oh, get up, you look silly. Well, now, just a moment. As long as I'm in this position, I might as well take advantage of the situation and propose to you the most beautiful, the most gorgeous... The... They ought to ration that soft soap as well as sugar. Susan, Susan, will you? Saved by the bell. Hello? Uh, what's hmm? the use? I thought you might be a little romantic by candlelight, but it... Might as well blow it out. Oh, yes, yes. Just a minute. Here, it's for you. It's from the studio. Who is it? Who else would it be but Ham Hart? He might hear you. How come he knew I was here? Mm -hmm. That is a mystery. He's only been calling you here for the last seven years. Hello? It's Hart. Yeah, that's a surprise. What's cooking, Mr. Hart? Yeah? Is that so? Mona Harrison didn't show up on the set tonight, and they can't locate her. In a long time. Hope it's not just an ugly rumor. Oh, have a hard heart. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Hart. Listen, it's tough enough to have to write that stuff about her without having to play bodyguard, too. Well, of course, if you put it that way, Mr. Hart. But it'll go on the expense account. Okay, Mr. Hart. Yes, I will, Mr. Hart. Yes, sir, Mr. Hart. Yes, Mr. Hart. No, Mr. Hart. Hey, you better get some fresh air. What for? You actually said no to him for once. Are you sure you're well? No, I'm sick. I got a person, dame. Well, at least we can do our night clubbing on the studio expense account. You're not dragging me out to look for Mona Harrison. I'm afraid we might find her. Besides, there might be another blackout. You mean there is another blackout? Well, that's strange. The lights are going on all over Hollywood. You and the civilian defense better get together. Hey, maybe I forgot to pay my rent. <laughs> A ventriloquist, huh? Say, you've been rehearsing with Charlie McCarty. That was the real thing, Joe. Yeah? It sounded like it came from across the hall. Hmm. Maybe we better go see what it is. Just because I solved that swimming pool murder for you, Hoffman, that doesn't make us friends. Who said you solved it? The district attorney, remember? I don't remember nothing. Well, I'm glad to hear you admit it. Say, how did you get on the scene of the crime so fast, or did you commit it? What happened? Why don't you look around, Hoffman? Maybe you came to the wrong house. Oh, so you're in on this, too. Where's the body? So nobody go away. You're all suspects. Do you uh, know anything about this? The switchboard light flashed on Quartman, and the Smith asked for a line. Well, I didn't think anything about it, so I gave her one. But I didn't expect for a minute she would call the police. Would you? The Smith called the police? Yeah. And just then, somebody grabbed me from behind and covered my eyes. And when he let go, the whole place was dark. Did you say he? Well, I don't know for sure. Hey, that girl is dead. 
Hoffman. You figured that out all by yourself. And that phone is off the hook. Come on, start talking. Somebody done it. The man's a genius. That's what the chief told me this morning. Don't change the subject. What happened here? When the blackout was over, the lights suddenly went out again. Miss Cooper and I heard a scream. We came in here and uh, found Miss Smith just as you see her. What's Miss Smith got to do with it? It's nothing, nothing at all, Hoffman. She just happens to be the victim. Smith, so that was her name. I told you that downstairs. I thought the name sounded familiar. Hoffman, you may need Mr. Powell. I can solve this without any help from you. But you can't go, not yet. I gotta ask some questions. Now, here's how I got it figured, see? She was in here getting ready to go out. Somebody snuck in and tried to run. She tried to call the police. They got scared and murdered. It's an open and shut case. Yeah, it's a cinch. All you have to do is prove it. I'll prove it, don't worry. Rid, call headquarters and tell them to send over some help. Okay, get back to your switchboard. And as for you... Yes, teacher. You go to your apartment and stay there until I call you. Don't look now, but we're being shadowed. Don't tell me it's the gorilla. Oh, cut out the wisecracks, you two. Maybe you don't realize it, but you're in a jam. Hmm. This is beginning to make sense. This is going to be good. Hmm. Why did you do it? Uh, why did I do what? You can't squirm out of it playing innocent. You lured the poor kid in here and got into a fight. Then you two strangled and drug her across the hall. It's an open and shut case. Well, you omitted one thing, Hoffman. You forgot to say that we called you so you could get here while the body was still warm. I'll figure that out, too. And when I do, it'll mean the hot seat. Come on, Susan. Where do you think you're going? We're going out and paint the town red, and then we're going to sign a confession. You can't do that. You don't want a confession? Any confession obtained under the influence of alcohol ain't legal. Why quibble? Well, come on, Susan. Let's go. Uh, see you again, I'm afraid. Oh, Frederick. Yes, sir. Has uh, Mona Harrison been here tonight? I'm sorry, Mr. Powell, not tonight. You mean she hasn't been here at all? No, ma'am. Well, if she does show up, will you tell her to get in touch with the studio right away? I'm sorry, sir, but Miss Harrison hasn't been in for several evenings. Oh, am I relieved. Look under the table, Freddie. That's where she usually winds up. And be sure and look in the vacuum cleaners in the morning. Certainly, sir. Good evening, Miss Cooper. Mr. Powell. Good evening, Lewis. Uh, why do you say? Oh, no, Lewis, sir. We're on business tonight. We're slumming for Mona Harris. Mona Harris? So, then, you haven't heard? Oh, everything about her except where she's hiding. No, no. I mean the paper. I just bought one. One moment. I'll show you what's it is. Well, what do you suppose she's done now? Here, look at this. Joe Powell called in yet? No. Shall I try? Yes, of course I want you to keep trying. Yes, Mr. Hart. What's the matter with him? Where is that guy? Don't worry. He'll show up. He always does. Come in. Come in. Well, it's time I heard from you. Now, just a minute, Mr. Hart. I'll do the talking. What's the idea of pulling a corny publicity stunt like this? Either I'm your publicity director or I'm not. Okay, you're not. No, 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 wait, wait a minute, Sarge. You can't do this to me. I got a contract. It's got some clauses in it. Joe's right, Mr. Hart. After all, you're only the producer. Oh, I... I'm sorry. I'm all upset, I guess. It looks as though Mona's run out on the picture. Even Mona wouldn't do a dirty trick like that. Not with the picture still unfinished. I've got 300,000 sunk in that office. A lot of difference that makes to her. Well, can't you finish the picture? No, the scenes I need are those of her. This picture means a lot to me. If it's a failure, I don't know whether... Hiya. This way, Chief. 
sorry to intrude, Mr. Hark, but your call sounded so urgent that I decided to get on the case myself. That's very nice of you, Mr. Williams. Oh, uh, Miss Cooper, Miss Lynn, Mr. Powell. Hello, Chief. I know Miss Cooper. Sure, you know her, Chief. She gummed up that Lefton robbery case from Pittsburgh. Well, you may call it gummed up, but I'd say that she solved it perfectly. Mm. It was a nice bit of work, Miss Cooper. Thank you. Well, where's the... He wants two bodies in one night. Oh, there's the Hoffman. Are you two at it? Well, someday I'm going to book both of you for disturbing the peace. That's okay by me, providing you execute him. <clears throat> may we all sit down, Mr. Hart? Yes, of course. I thought you might know something about Ellen Smith, who was murdered earlier this evening. Oh, then you didn't come about Mona Harrison. I imagine she'll show up when she has enough publicity out of this. Oh, yes, of course, you're right. I was a little worried, though. I learned this Smith girl has been working on this lot lately as an extra. I thought I might pick up something on which to hinge my investigation. I told you, Chief, it's an open and shut case. Ellen Smith. Let me think. Huh? Take a look at this. Why, yes, I've seen Miss Smith before. What Mr. Hart means is that Ellen Smith was a guest at Mona Harrison's dinner party last night. Of course, we didn't have anything to eat or drink, but we all had a splendid opportunity to tell Mona exactly what we thought of her. <laughs> I knew it the minute I saw you and him. They were in the room with the body, Chief. What do you mean, in it? We put it there. Who else was at this party? Well, all of us here... And Ellen Smith and Mona, of course. Anybody else? Mona's servants. How many servants? She had three. A chauffeur, a maid, and a cook. That's the last I've seen of Mona. Well, the last we saw of Ellen Smith until this evening. And today, Ellen Smith is murdered and Mona Harrison disappears. Hmm? That gives the case an entirely different complexion. It's just like I figure it, Chief. It's I know. Open and shut case. Just another robbery. I think we'd all better meet Miss Harrison's apartment an hour from now. Maybe we can find out what happened last night. Well, I'm dead tired to go home and take a shower and change my clothes. I think I'll try that, too. Let's meet at Lyman's for some coffee before we start this inquisition. Mr. Hart, will you and uh, Carol meet us there? Oh, I'd love to. We'll be there. Hey, what's cooking here? Oh, Hoffman. I want you to round up all of Miss Harrison's servants and have them present tonight. Check, Chief. Don't forget, all of you, 12 o'clock. Everyone is here but Hoffman. Oh, he's probably out rounding up clues on a great train robbery. Hoffman! Well, here I am, Chief. Right on the dot, just like you said. Sit down. What's your name? Alice Jones, sir. I'm the cook. At least I was the cook. What do you mean by that? Well, I handed in my resignation just before dinner last night. Were you in the habit of resigning before each meal, Alice? No, sir. I worked for the same family for 15 years. Well, suppose you tell us in your own words just what happened. Well, so me and my niece, Louise. Your niece? This child. She's my only living kin. We've been used to working for quality folks. Real high-toned people. We ain't custom to having folks talk to us like we is trash. My aunt didn't like what she did to me. What was that, Louise? Well, I was helping Miss Harrison to dress for dinner last night. And I merely said shoes would look better with the gown she was wearing than the shoes she had on. Yes. I guess she must have been on edge. I'll say she's on the edge of a breakdown, seems like to me. She's always that way, Alice. Your newspaper articles didn't help Miss Harrison any. Well, there's a swell idea for some real publicity for you, Joe. Chauffeur defends Mona Harrison's reputation. <laughs> Such as it is. Right, Charles, Susie, I'll make a note of that. Hey, we ought to find out more about her. She may have secrets. Could be. Let's get on with this unpleasant business. Every time you two say anything, it's making me more suspicious. Go on, Louise. Well, sir, when I mentioned shoes, she flared up and told me she could dress herself without my help. Then Louise told her to just try the red shoes on. What happened then? Well, I went to the closet to get them. And before I could open the door, she sprang across the room and slapped my face. And then I start crying. It must have made her more mad, because she pushed me out of the room. Poor child. 
She come right down to me in the kitchen. Tears were streaming down her face. What did you do, Alice? What any self-respecting sergeant would have done. I quit. And I took Louise here right along with me. We didn't even wait for our week's wages. No, sir, not us. Then you left the house? Yes, sir. Arthur there got permission from Miss Harrison to drive us home. Did you take them home? Yes, sir. What's your name? It's Arthur Evans, sir. All right, Evans. Tell us what you know. Well, sir, when uh, Alice and Louise came out all packed, I, I called Miss Harrison from the garage and asked if I was to take them home. Miss Harrison said yes, and that I could have the night off as uh, she would have to take all of them to dinner. And did you take the night off? Oh, sure. I'm no sap. I know when I'm not wanted around. Just what do you mean by that? Well, nothing, I guess. I... Well, I'm just upset at all this bad publicity for Miss Harrison. You seem to take a lot of interest in Miss Harrison's personal affairs. I merely try to be a faithful employee. You took Alice and Louise straight home, of course. Oh, yes, sir, I did. Then where did you go? To Harry's Bowling Alley, uh, near where I live. I met some of the boys, and we bowled for a couple of hours. Well, you can check on that. Make it over that, Hoffman. Don't worry, Chief. I'll pin it on him. That's what worries me. Then did you go straight home? The landlady saw me coming in. She'll verify what I said. You can go. And you too. Thanks for your cooperation. Oh, just a moment, please. Did any of you see Miss Ellen Smith here last night? No. no sir. What about you? I told you I drove the servants home. I don't like the tone of your voice, Evans. That'll be all. Suppose you tell us what you meant, Mr. Hart. As I remember, we all got here about the same time. I brought Miss Lynn, Susan and Joe were together. I rang the bell, and Mona answered it herself. Oh, Hamilton, darling. Oh, hello, my dear. I'm so glad you came along that Hamilton was able to bring you. Uh, it rather takes him off my hands for one evening. He doesn't weigh so heavily on mine. Nice going, Carol. Well, hello, Joe. Hello, Mona. It was nice of you to come, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> it just goes to prove that you uh, really don't mean all those tacky things you write about me in your columns. On the contrary, it really means that when I'm hungry, I don't care where I eat. <laughs> oh, these Hollywood columnists are so clever. What a shame the public doesn't read them. <laughs> well, I'd say that you both made a birdie on that hole. Now that we've been properly... Uh, how about some cocktails? Now you're really earning part of your salary. Thanks, Chief. You'll have to do the mixing, Joe. My servants walked out on me a little while ago. Come, Hamilton. And you lost that wonderful cook, Alice. You've always been bragging about... Well, it was just to make conversation because she became quite intolerable. Oh, there's dear little Ellen. Hello, everybody. Hamilton, uh, this is Ellen Smith. How do you do? Uh, she's been working on our lot. Uh, she really can act, too. She's a clever child. I wanted you to meet her. Oh, um, oh and uh, this is Joe, our publicity director. Uh, I have a last name. It's Powell. This is uh, Susan Cooper. Yes, I know, Miss Cooper. I follow your column religiously. Well, thank you. It's flattering to know you have at least one reader. We live across the hall. We see each other often. Oh, and uh, this is Carol. Uh, oh, what's your name? Lynn. Oh, it's uh, Carol Lynn. Uh, in her own uh, small. <laughs> You're very generous, Mona. Wish I could say the same for you. Uh, Joe, uh, do fix the cocktails. Bourbon and soda as usual, Chief? Make mine the same. Life can be beautiful. <laughs> oh, uh, please make yourselves comfortable. Just over there. Bring your cushion? No, but it's lots of floor space. No, thank you. <laughs> Hamilton, I want you to give Ellen a chance. She's very lovely. I agree with that. Thank you, Mr. Hart. <laughs> Isn't she charming? And as I said before, she's very talented. 
You know, she can act rings around some of those would-be actresses that uh, hang around your studio. If I weren't a lady, I'd like to punch her right in the nose. Oh, Mona, darling. I'd like to write a biography of your life. Really? I'm planning a book on Hollywood. So much has been written about the upper crust. I'd like to write a story about a crumb. Hey, Mona. Little Goldilocks has been here ahead of us. The bottles are decidedly empty. Oh, it's those awful servants. I, I told them to see that everything was prepared. <laughs> Looks like you're also stuck for the drinks at Macombo. The dinner's on me. Oh, that precious of you, Hamilton. I'm sorry, I can't go. What do you mean? Of course you're coming along. If you read your contract, oh, you'll well, see that um, you have... You, you run along. Um, I have something very important to do. Uh, I'll join you later. Well, oh, don't be too long. I'm starving now. <laughs> I'll run up and change my gown. Come on, Susie. <laughs> If you don't mind, I'll wait for Mona. I want to thank her for introducing me to you. Reason to thank her, too. Oh, you don't know how happy you've made me. We all left for dinner. But neither Mona nor Ellen showed up at the Macombo. Well, didn't you telephone to find out where Mona was? Yes, I tried all day, but got no answer. Hmm. Can anyone add to what Mr. Hardy said? Hmm. No, I... That's about everything. Hartman! Oh, Chief, I practically had it figured out in my mind. You mean in your dreams, don't you, Hoffman? Ah, oh, it's an open and shut case. Where's Miss Cooper? Cooper? What happened to Miss Cooper? That's what I'm asking you. Go and see if you can find her. And don't go to sleep on the way. Ah, oh, Chief, it's that hot milk the doc told me to drink from my ulcers. Well, from now on, you drink it on your own time. Not on the taxpayers. Find Miss Cooper. Cooper, Miss Cooper, yes. Looking for something? No. Are you? No, I was just climbing the stairs for my help. You ought to do something about that figure, Hoffman. Unless you're developing that gas tank in case of a national ration. Shall we go down now? Yes. Would you like to powder your nose? You're a little shiny. Oh, that's just a reflection from my badge. <laughs> I thought it was the brilliance of your mind. What's the matter with my mind? So, you found her. Right in Mona's bedroom, and she was up to something, too. I was chopping up bodies and stuffing them in a trunk. Is the huddle over? We haven't heard from you yet. Oh, didn't Hoffman tell you? I committed the murder. You couldn't do that. Not without a motive. But I had a motive, Hoffman. I had a wonderful motive. Yeah? Why? Well, you see, Ellen bought a dress exactly like one of mine. Now, you know what that does to a woman. Any woman... Well, we may as well go home for tonight. But I want you all to remain in town in case we need you. Come on, Hoffman. Here's your bag, Susie. I'll take you down to Barney's and you can buy me some onion soup, huh? Oh, no, thanks. I'm tired, Joe. I'm heading straight home. Well, can't shoot a man for trying.
are or I'll shoot. Oh, oh, oh. oh so are you, is it? Come on, Rosie, get up. Supposed to be a one, not an actor. What, what? Don't be more stupid than necessary. Listen, Hoffman, somebody opened that safe while hiding in the closet. Then when I came out, he tried to choke me. Sure, I know just the guy you mean. He had a long black beard and black piercing eyes. Listen, you dumb cluck, I'm not kidding. Neither am I, and don't call me cluck. That's better. And don't give me no more trouble or I'll book you for resisting arrest. Listen, what about that fellow that tried to choke me? I think I'll let Sherlock Holmes pick him up. And we'll see if we can get you adjoining rooms at Alcatraz. Get me Mike Graham in the camera department. Yes, Mr. Hart. Mike, Hart talking. Now listen carefully. This is important and confidential. I want you to meet me at the back gate in 45 minutes. Bring along a camera and a roll of film. I figured out a way to get those scenes so as we can finish Mona's picture. Better bring something along for traveling. Have my car and traveling bag brought to the back gate in 30 minutes. You've been stalling me for two hours. You can't do that. Where is Mona Harrison? What were you doing? Where did you put the papers? I ate them. I was hungry and the food in jail is awful. Put that down. Calendar. Can't I even have Thursday? No, you can't. Oh, come on, Susie. Kid. Who killed Ellen Smith? I won't tell anybody. Honest, I'll keep it a secret. Come on. Uh... Hello, Chief. Cooper, to what do we owe the pleasure of this early morning crawl? To the stupidity of this mastermind. Oh, so now you admit I got a mastermind. I'm glad to hear you say that. That makes us unanimous. What's this? It's a desk report on her. I spent the night in your steel hotel. Service is very bad. Oh, really now, Miss Cooper? You think she's kidding? Where do you think I found her? Well, according to this, in Miss Harrison's bedroom. Uh, I never knew Hoffman could write. You're charged with illegal entry, resisting arrest, abusing an officer, and robbery. I can't believe the robbery charge. Just what were you after, Miss Cooper? I, uh, I was after some clothes for Mona Harrison. Since when does Mona keep her clothes in a safe? Well, haven't you heard? That's where they're keeping everything since the rashes. How's your sugar? Oh, I got two pounds up in the attic. Huh. Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Get me in trouble with the FBI? Sit down, Hoffman. But if she squeals on me, Chief... You say you went back after some clothes for Miss Harrison. Yes. Then I take it that she's not missing after all. No, I was just a publicity stunt cooked up by Joe Powell. Well, if you don't believe me, call him. That's just what we're going to do, Miss Cooper. Hoffman. Okay, Chief. Get Mr. Powell on the phone. Okay. Well, I hope you're telling the truth, Miss Cooper. Because if you're not, it won't go easy with you. He what? Hey, I got the dog pound. What's his number? You better be careful. You know what'll happen to you if they catch you barking. Put out the wisecracks and tell me the number. State one, 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 two, one. Hello? That you, Powell? This is Hoffman, Detective Bureau. We got that Cooper gal here. Yeah, Cooper. You know Cooper. Say, she tells us Mona Harris ain't missing after all. Hold it. You always tip our hand. Give me that phone. Hello, Paul. Miss Williams. <laughs> Say, I want to congratulate you. That was quite a publicity stunt you pulled. Well, oh, I... Uh, uh, th thanks, Williams. Uh, no hard feelings, I hope. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> oh, say, I'd uh, like to speak to Susan. He'd like to talk to you. Uh, tell him I'll call him as soon as I leave here. Uh, Miss Cooper says she'll talk to you later. What's that? Oh. Well, just a second. I think you better talk to him now. Hello, 
Joe, darling. Oh, I hope you're not angry at me for spilling the beans about Mona. Oh, Joe. Oh, that's sweet of you. Yes, I did. And unless you come down and bail me out, I'm stuck. Okay, then you're stuck. Ah, who cares? Do you realize the spot you put me in? Suppose Mona doesn't show up, what then? Why, for two cents, I'd wring your neck so tight. Of course I'll marry you, darling. Just as soon as you bail me out of this Bastille. Yes. Yes, dear. Mm. Yes, darling. All right. He wants to tell you he'll send the money right down. Do you want us to release her? Very well. Yeah. Right away. Let me go, Miss Cooper. Thanks. And don't make my bed up. I uh, won't be using it again tonight. I hope. <laughs> Cut that out. Come in. Hi, Mr. Hart. Have a nice trip? No, thanks, Joe. I just had one. <laughs> what a sense of humor. Where'd you go, Palm Springs? Uh, yes, yes, I went to Palm Springs. I felt I needed a rest. After the Smith girl's murder and Mona's disappearance and all that, I just felt I had to get away to figure things out. Yes, yeah, certainly is funny. Police haven't turned up a thing on Mona. No, and I saw in the papers where they hadn't made any progress on the Smith case either. Too bad about her. She was a lovely child. Yeah, looks like we're throwing 300,000 bucks right out the window. It's tough luck, too. Another day or and we would have had the picture right in the bag. Joe, we're going to finish the picture. Well, you can't do that. Not without those shots of Mona. Well, I was resting. I felt I had to get out of Hollywood to find a way out. Well, I've always given you credit for being a great producer. But if you've got this one worked out, you're a genius. This is confidential, Joe. If it ever got out, your business is your business. My business is telling it to the public. That's just what I don't want you to do this time. Well, you're paying me what is humorously called a salary, so if you say forget it, I'll forget it. I remembered some old scenes from some of Mona's earlier pictures. By inserting them, it'll give us exactly what we want. You've certainly got a better memory than mine. I don't remember any old scenes. You'll just leave that to me, will you? Of course I will, Mr. Hart, but All I... right, then you go right ahead with your publicity campaign. Give it everything you've got. Spare no expense. This will probably be our last Mona Harrison, so I'm hoping to clean up on it. What do you mean, the last Mona? I'm fed up with her temperamental actions. I'm going to use the absence clause to cancel her contract. Miss Cooper. Okay. Yes. Have her come right in. It's Susan Cooper. She ought to be barred from the lot. I just assumed she didn't learn about what I just told you. I didn't like what I saw in the papers about her trying to rifle Mona's safe. Come in, Susan. Ah, my little bride-to-be. Come into my aching arms and see what Pappy's got for you. The nuptial permit, no less. A dollar down and you keep paying for the rest of your life. All it needs is your moniker on this dotted line. Are you kidding? Am I kidding? Certainly I'm not kidding. Didn't you tell Williams and Hoffman you were going to marry me? Didn't you say you would if I bailed you out? Listen, Romeo. The law says that any confession gained under duress may be bought as evidence. Well, what's good enough for the American courts is good enough for Susan Cooper. Oh, Mr. Hart, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry for your sake about the bad news. Bad news? What bad news? Well, don't. Did you, of all people, haven't heard about Mona. believe it. Why do you say that? Oh, nothing. Nothing, Joe. Uh, this makes me feel awful. That's irony for you. Half the people in Hollywood would gladly have strangled her. But when it actually happens... Ooh. That really puts the kibosh on the picture. Three hundred thousand dollars right in the ash can. I'm not so sure. Come in. 
Your secretary said you wanted this film delivered to you personally, Mr. Hart. Well, yes, uh, just uh, put it uh, uh, in that closet right over there, please. Yes, sir. Special film for, for the War Department. Of course, you know there'll be an inquest. I'm afraid so. But of course, there could be some mistake. Yeah. If Hoffman has anything to do with it, it'll probably turn out to be two other people. Yeah, you and I. I hope the police are positive in their identification. Jimmy Starr here. Yes, sir, I'm here. Mr. Starr, you are a columnist, I believe. I wish I could make my boss believe I am. Now, in your experience as a columnist, you would have become personally acquainted with the deceased? I knew Mona Harrison very well, over a number of years. Is there any doubt in your mind that this is Mona Harrison? No, I don't believe so. Thank you, that is all, Mr. Starr. Mr. Hart, you better give me your keys. Your car is parked in front of a fire plug. It is not. I parked it way up the street. Well, maybe you didn't set your brakes. It's in front of the plug now. You might get a ticket. All right. Many thanks. Okay. Mr. Edwin Scheller, please. Yes. Mr. Scheller, with your intimate knowledge of Hollywood celebrities, uh, you would be in a position to know Mona Harrison very well? Yes, I would. Mm. I'd say without hesitation that if that is Mona, I'm badly mistaken. Thank you, Mr. Scheller. Mr. Erskine Johnson, please. Yes. Mr. Johnson, you conduct a column and a radio program, I believe. That's right. And on your radio program, uh, picture stars appear from time to time. Yes, the uh, program concerns personalities. I occasionally present them on the air. Uh, Miss Harrison appeared only last week. You're sure of this identification? Positive. Thank you. That's all. Here, Chief. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Harry Crocker, please. I'm right here. Mr. Crocker, your experience as a columnist should place you in a position to make a positive identification of Mona Harrison. It does. And furthermore, I lunched with her just a day or two before her disappearance. And uh, this body? Unquestionably, Mona Harrison. Thank you, that's all. I think that is sufficient identification. There's still some doubt in my mind. I only feel that way because he I... He feels that way because he knows who's done it. Oh, how do you like that priority on brains? That's all, as far as the police are concerned. Okay, Williams. I would like to have everyone come here for a moment, please. Now I'm going to ask each of you to confirm your identification. Yes, that's Mona. Definitely. I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm positive. Well... That's Mona. But I can change my mind. Yeah, that's Mona. That is all, I thank you. Go ahead, Hoffman. I brought in that Carol Lynn, like you said. Oh, I see. You know what I think, Chief? Go ahead. Well, it's an open and shut case. Just a little fancy deduction, that's all. You stick to plain deduction, Hoffman. It'll get you a lot farther. <laughs> You're always kidding, Chief. Well, go ahead, but make it brief. I want to get through with questioning Miss Lynn. Okay, Chief, I'll let you have it straight from the hip. Uh, I mean shoulder. First, Ona Harrison's dead, is that right? Right. Second, somebody done it. Splendid. For a motive. Oh. Third, the marks on Mona Harrison's throat were different from those on Ellen Smith. So I figured... The murders were done by two different people. That's the smartest thing you've figured out yet. 
That's practically what I've decided myself. Well, sometimes it takes me a little while to figure things out. But when I do, I'm pretty near right. Well, go ahead with what you were saying. Just one more point. Number four. Ellen Smith was strangled by a man, but Mona was strangled by a woman. How do you figure? Well, the autopsy shows that Ellen Smith's neck was broken. No woman could have done that. Mona's neck wasn't broken, but there were scratches and traces of fingernail polish. The medical examiner told us that. You know, Hoffman, there are times when I wonder why I keep you on the force. And then you suddenly come up with something really worthwhile. Thanks, Chief. But that ain't all. I've narrowed it down to two suspects, boy. Who? Hamilton Hart, for one. Who else? And Susan Cooper. Ridiculous. Put it. Bring in Miss Lynn. Here's Miss Lynn, Chief. Sit down, please. I'm sorry to inconvenience you this way. May I ask why you had me brought here? Let me see your fingernails. See, Chief? Red nail polish. I suppose every girl in Hollywood doesn't wear it. That'll be enough, Hoffman. Miss Lynn, Mona Harrison was in love with Hamilton Hart, wasn't she? I... I couldn't say exactly. But she was very fond of him. I don't know anything about Hamilton Hart's private life. But it's possible, isn't it? Well, yes, it's possible. Hamilton Hart might have had a motive for murdering Mona Harrison. Oh, no. No, that's foolish. Why, why he couldn't possibly have. You might have wanted to kill her yourself. Oh, no. Why, there are 59 people in Hollywood have wanted to. But well, that doesn't mean that any of them did. If nobody did, how come she's dead? Oh, I know, but... Oh, uh, but you know it wasn't you or Hart. I know it wasn't him. Because it was either you or Susan Cooper. Oh, man's man. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Lynn. I'll handle this, Hoffman. Oh, but, uh... Okay, Chief. There's just one more question, Miss Lynn. Have you any idea where Mr. Hart went when he left town the other day? I don't, Mr. Williams. Honestly, I... I don't know. I'm sorry to have troubled you. My car is just outside. The driver will take you home. Good evening, Miss Lynn. Bye. Hoffman, I want you to shadow Hamilton Hart. But, Chief, I, uh... You're wasting time, Hoffman. You get on Hart's trail and stay on it until I take you off. But, Chief, I was figuring... Do I have to... No, you don't have to. See you later, Chief.
Hey. No Mickey Mouse? What are you doing here? I was leaving. In fact, I am leaving. Uh, Susan, wait a minute. What do you make of it? Well, I don't know. What do you make of it, Mr. Bones? Of course, that uh, couldn't be Mona. Oh, certainly not. <laughs> well, I'll see you one of these evenings when you get through work. Maybe I'll let you take me out and buy me a cocktail. Uh, Susan, wait a minute. Sit down. You're going to have a nervous breakdown, or I will, if you keep this up. You know very well that was Mona. Suppose I do. What does it prove? It simply proves there's something fishy about the whole business. <laughs> I saw you fishing for Hart's Key this morning to double-cross me. I'm sorry, darling, but you've been trying to double-cross me from the very beginning. Uh, what's fair for one is fair for... Oh, but it's Susan. If I weren't so much in love with you, I... You are, sweet. You know, I can just see us 50 years from now. A lovely little cottage. Big open fireplace. You and I sitting in front of it, trying to give each other a hot foot. Oh, on the level, Joe. If we could just work together. Nothing would suit me better, Sue. Well, all right, then you wind up that film and let's talk. What do you think, Joe? Come on now, be honest. Remember, we're partners. All right, Susan, I'll give it to you straight. Those were shots of Mona. They weren't cut out from any old pictures. They were new. They've just been made. How do you know that? I checked at the laboratory this morning when I came back from the morgue. That means that Hart got them someplace while he was out of town. That's just it. Just what? The coroner said that Mona had been dead for a week. Have you any idea where those shots were made? No, there's nothing outstanding about the background that I could see. Did you uh, notice anything particular? Anything special? Well, there was a bridge. In a public building, there might be a courthouse. Yeah, but that, that could be anywhere. Yes, it could be. Joe, it yeah? seems to me that when Mona first came to Hollywood, she had a different name. By jingo, you're right. I figured out that Mona Harrison moniker myself. Uh... Why didn't I think of that before? If you could remember her right name, it might give us a clue. Mm, it was some corny name like Upsets or Kuzovitsky or Jones or... What's that a clue to? Mm, nothing. Then again, it might be the clue to the whole mystery. Anyway, we ought to find out. Well, I've got the information in my files. Oh, look it up for me like a darling, will you? Why, sure, Susan. Um, aren't you coming along? You're not suspicious already. Oh, no, of course not, dear. I... No, listen, uh, I have to phone my editor. You know, if I don't check in every once in a while, he has an annoying habit of trying to keep me off the payroll. <coughs> Hello. Hello, this is Susan Cooper. Will you give me the boss? Well, okay, okay, boss. Go ahead, fire me. But if you do, you'll miss the biggest story that's broken in Hollywood in years. How do I know? Well, I don't yet, but I will any minute. Okay. There are a dozen regs that'll pay me plenty for it. Well, now you're running on synthetic rubber. Yeah. <laughs>
I'll give you just five minutes. If you're not here by then, I'm going without you. Okay, Joe. I don't know what you're up to, but here it goes. See if Joe Powell does. Busy? Never mind. I'll go over there. What's the idea of stealing that key off my ring? If you think I'm going to stand for that. Joe. Joe. What's the matter? Joe. anything like that again. Come on, Joe. Stop talking. Why did you steal my key? Why did you try to choke me? Why did I... Say, I don't even know what you're talking about. You, you mean you didn't do it? In one more minute, I'm going to have you thrown out of this studio bodily. And I'll cancel your contract. You know, wait a minute, Mr. Hart. If you didn't do it, then... Where's Susan? Wasn't she in your office? What time is it? One question at a time. I don't know where Susan is. Now, do I care? Unless... Say, did you happen to tell her about... about Mona? I mean, about finishing the picture? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Hart, we did see the film. I came over here to check on Mona Harrison's real name. Susan knows as much about it as I do. So whoever tried to get me is probably after her, too. Well, that's possible. But if I know Susan... She's found out where Mona is. And with that murderer after her... Listen, Mr. Hart, this is a matter of life and death. You've got to tell me where Mona is. Mona, why, uh... Well, come on now, there's no time to waste. You've got to take me to her. Take you to her? Why, it's all the way to Reno. Reno? Come on, operator. Hello. Hello, operator. Get me two tickets for Reno. All there. Now, listen, Ham. You listen to me. And don't call me Ham. Now, Carol's waiting outside in my car. If we're going to Reno... Well, then what are we waiting for? Come on, Ham. I mean, boss. But... Hello, Chief. This is Hoffman. Say, I guess Hart's going to get a divorce. Yeah, a divorce. Him and Powell are heading for Reno. Besides everything else I've called you, you're feeble-minded. This may be the break we're waiting for. And you think Hart's going to Reno for a divorce? <laughs> he isn't married, stupid. Okay, Chief. I'll be waiting at the depot.
to run me off the road. Why have you been following me? I want to talk to you. Yes? I... I yes? followed you because... Because I... I, uh, I want to see Martha Halverson. Uh, you mean Marie Halverson? Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot it is Marie. Uh, who shall I say? Well, you won't have to announce me. Just give me the number of her room. I I'm an old friend. Well, I'll have to let her know you're coming up. Oh. Well, then tell her that... Susan! Are you all right? You got here okay? Well, sure, I got here okay. Why? Oh, did you expect something to happen to me? He certainly did. And by the way... How did you hear about Reno? Uh-huh. Well, you see, it was like this. If I should ever really break down and marry Joe, he'll be my seventh husband. And it was right here in Reno I divorced the other six. They were sweet boys, too. <laughs> a rat. Now, cut out the comedy. You had inside information. Well, you had the same information, only I used my head while you used a projector. I don't get it. Hmm, neither do I. You remember that scene where Mona comes down a flight of stairs and the bridge where she throws the ring into the river? Yeah. You walk right down the street and you'll see them both. Ask half the women in America. Reno. Come over here. I want to talk to you. Look at me. Excuse us, Joe. Uh, you and Tara amuse yourselves. Uh, Susan, any adverse publicity, and I stand to lose $300,000 invested in Mona's picture. So I admit you've got me on a spot. But I figured if we could get together and make a deal... Well, I could use a little nest egg. Because I don't think Joe will ever be contented with anything but the best. But it's no deal, Mr. Hart. You seem to forget we're mixed up in a murder. Look, Keith, it's a reunion. That isn't funny, Hoffman. The junior G-man. Where? He brought a friend. He ain't no friend. He's a Reno detective. Hey, how about you can be the dummy? That doesn't seem natural. Never mind the repartee, Miss Cooper. What's going on here? Why the gathering of the clan? Why, uh, we were uh, we were worried about Susan. Oh, oh. speak for yourselves, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm here on a vacation. Could you give me a room in the back? Uh, inside or out? Yeah. Don't get personal. <gasps> Mona! Mona Harrison! the idea of hiding out on us. Oh, go away. Let me alone. Now, come on, Mona. What's the lowdown on this deal? Oh, can't you let me alone? You heard her, Powell. Besides, Mona Harrison's dead. How could she be walking around? What's so strange about that? You've been doing it for years. Oh, yeah? Now, look here, That'll Powell. That'll be enough, Hoffman. Is this Mona Harrison, Mr. Hart? Why, yes. Does uh, that satisfy you? Not quite. Oh, go away. Pardon me, gentlemen. I think this will clear things up. A signed confession from Arthur, Mona Shilker. Knowing I am dying, I must tell the truth. I murdered Ellen Smith and Mona's twin sister. Hey, Chief, you see? There's two of them. Hoffman, stop mumbling in my ear. This is the first time I ever knew Mona had a twin. Well, according to this, your sister came to Hollywood the day of the murders and demanded money. Otherwise, she threatened to expose the fact that you and Arthur were secretly married. Yes, uh, that's how it was. Arthur Marie, uh quarreled. He lost his head and uh, killed her. So he lost his head and killed her, huh? Yes, yes. And to protect you, he sent you up here to hide out while he covered up or took the rap, if any. Yes, uh, that's it. I wanted to stay, but he wouldn't let me. Our little Mona was married all the time. No wonder she wouldn't give anyone a tumble. But how does Ellen fit into the picture? Oh, that's a cinch. Ellen was in on the blackmail with Mona's sister. Splendid, Hoffman. You ought to be promoted to a flat foot for such a deduction. Yeah? What's wrong with her? Everything. Ellen remained behind the night of the dinner party fizzle. And she saw Arthur with a body. She got scared and ran. But she was afraid to go home or to tell the police because she knew Arthur would be looking for her. But she did go home the night of the blackout and started to call us. Arthur was waiting in the apartment. Yes, uh, he was my husband. I know I shouldn't say it, but it's true. Every word of it. Well, Miss Cooper, 
Again, it seems the police department is indebted to you. Uh-huh. The murderer is dead, and we've got Mona as the accessory. I should be pulling this on Hoffman, not you. But you have things just a little bit reversed. The accessory is dead. The murderer is still very much alive. What? Oh, she's going to be a wise guy now and cook up some wild yarn. Why don't you let the police handle things? I'm afraid they might put you on it. She's insane. If anyone's insane, it's you. Why are you... Hey, boy! Hey, you, boy! Oh, hey, here, 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 here. That'll be enough, Mona. Hey. Well, she kind of called me crazy. I'll, I'll tear her to pieces. Oh, oh, oh. Tanya, your neighbor's a witness? Cool. Give her a pen, William. Sit here a moment. Sign your name to that. See that? She's got a pen in her right hand. I don't get it. Well, neither did I until I saw those pictures. You remember the scene where Mona throws the ring into the river? She did it with her right hand. Now, I know Mona well enough to know she's left-handed. It isn't true. It isn't Mona, but her sister. That's right. Mona's dead. This is Marie. Oh, yeah? Who told me Mona's real name? I remembered the story about her having a sister. A psychopathic case. She always kept her... Don't you dare come in me! Don't touch me! You're going to hurt me! When are you going? Oh, dear! Oh, dear. The poor kid, that's a tough brain. Yeah. Carol, are you all right? Yes, much better, thank you. It was so horrible. Yes, you poor darling. Well, Chief, I guess that opens up the case. Thanks to Susan. Yeah, thanks, Susie. You did a swell job. Well, I'm flattered to hear you say that, Hoffman. What were you going to say, Hoffman? I, uh... I... I forgot. One thing still puzzles me. How did you know it wasn't Mona before she picked up the pen? I just played a hunch. Arthur didn't write that confession. I did. Well, he died without saying a word. Gal friend, I'm beginning to appreciate you more every minute. I am, too. Ah, that's well of you fellas. (laughs) But there's one thing I'd like you to explain to me, Mr. Hart. How did you know that the girl you thought was Mona was in Reno? Well, uh, between the time I called Joe at your place, and we went out to Mona's place for the questioning, she called me from the railroad station. She asked me to go to her safe and get some letters. But before I'd agree, I made her promise that I could come to Reno and shoot the rest of those scenes. Did she tell you why she was leaving town? Oh, she was having some trouble with a boyfriend. Said she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Ah, then it was you who tried to strangle me that night. I? Say, what is this, a frame-up? Oh, she's kidding you, Hart. She knows it was the chauffeur. Well, Joel, may I give you a lift back to Hollywood? You certainly may, baby. Well, Hoffman and I have to stay here to clear up some details. Well, now, it's a splendid opportunity for you to divorce Hoffman from his badge. Listen, nobody's taken my badge away, not till I've had time to lock you up some fine day for life. Ah, that's sweet of you, Hoffman, but you're a little bit late. I've already promised Joel. (laughs) Hey, is that gal screwy, or am I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the payoff, boss. The chauffeur was married to this demented sister. They'd been blackmailing Mona for years. And when she clamped down on them, Marie choked her to death. So to protect her, the chauffeur killed a Smith girl. And then attempted a few other murders. Yeah. How how about it, Susie? Go away, the boss will hear you. Well, there's your story. Now, how about that raise? Yeah? But we could be different, Susan. We could get married here in Reno. No, Joe, no. I, I mean, yes, boss. Yes. Oh, you're a piece. Look. What? Oh, I think nothing of it. As a certain pal of mine would say, it's just an open and shut case. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, I ought to give up, but I don't suppose... We've got to get back to Hollywood. Order of the 4th Interceptor Command, the Hollywood Network is now leaving the air. We will retrain when the blackout is over. Another blackout. I have to go through that business all over again. Yeah, but let's skip the beginning and go on right from here, together. You really think it will out? Do I? Baby, Why all the illumination, brother? 
Don't you know there's a blackout? Now, Turn out those lights. See here, Uncle. I'm guide to the civilian defense, but to me, you're just a bundle of nerves. Do you turn out those lights, or do I have oh, to... Oh, okay, Uncle. Flatter. <laughs> hey, you in that second-story window, turn out those lights. <laughs> well, Susan, now that I've got that settled, I... Hey, well, Susan, wait a minute. Susan, I... I want to ask you something. The answer is still no. I don't some up there in that camp if you don't come to see me sometime. You mean you enlisted? Sure, honey. And before I go, I, I thought... Oh, Joe... I've always been crazy about a uniform. Oh, Greetings, Hastings Mystery Theater viewers and subscribers, and welcome to all of our first-time viewers. I'm Dan LeClaire, the Program Manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel. We're glad to have you aboard. Please take a minute to check out the links in the description below. There you will find a link to a bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode, as well as links to our merchandise shop, where you can buy products related to classic movie mystery themed like t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other things. And if you purchase our products, this will help us greatly. This will enable us to continue focusing our efforts on bringing you these great old mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. And also, consider giving us a donation as well. And of course, like and subscribe. And as always, leave us your wonderful comments. It is my duty to find the guilty person and bring him to justice. And I will spare no one. Get Lieutenant Taylor. Send in the civilians under suspicion at once. Enter and identify yourselves. Lieutenant Robert Taylor. Jean Parker. Una Merkel. Jean Hirschold. Misha Hour. Key Luke. At your service, sir. Okay, Cappy. Healy, you're my pal. I know you didn't do it. Okay, Pendleton. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say the same for you. Huh? The people under suspicion are aboard, sir. For the first time in history, there's been murder in the fleet. I'm going to recall to you some of the circumstances that happened on board this ship today. We are going to find the guilty persons. You will remember that, uh... That's a bullet wound. This man's been shot. Murdered. Give me that! It's mine! I can't just give it to me! That's all trying to hide her purse, It's sir. mine! I'm not denying it! I would have shot him, too! Who said the $50 bill is no good? The bank said it's no good. They said it's Confederate money. It hasn't been good for years. Well, certainly it's Confederate money. It's good if the South has another war and wins. Uh, you let me go. Now come in here. You can't pin these two murder normally. You have your job to do. Do it. Oh, but darling, please, please be careful. 